You know, I just watched the True Puka video. Uh, I wish I had thought of the thing of it in my friggin' head before I friggin' started spewing out about it. Uh, the title was Former Evolutionist, Present Day Bigot. <laughs> I love the way he goes on. He's funny. But the thing is, is that it's like there's so many things about bigot and homophobe and Jew and all this other stuff, you know? I don't know. I I can't or I think did racists ever come up? Well, certainly it's inclination did and we're Jew. But I just don't think of that way anymore. Maybe I'm becoming a fringe element type of person. Uh, in not name of that user, but just general, you know, fringe elements. You know, see, he, he tarnished that name. I mean a general person. Not the one he freaking used as a username. I mean, someone who believes in a fringe view. Because, but not his. Not that guy's. Not that group's. Because that's a form of status, too. It, it, it is. It's freaking, you know, there's a lot of things I disagree with there. I, I halfway agree with Jupuka a lot of things. It's just, I don't think I agree with him the same way. Reading a lot of his tweets and stuff, and it's like, well, no. To me, that seems like the first level. And it's hard to explain that, but it's like, it's, it's almost like there's, well, you ever heard of third way politics? There's first way, there's second way. There's like liberal, new liberal, third way politics. It's almost like what I'm trying to describe as fourth way politics. Uh, an energy politic. Almost like the technocracy, but, or a technocrat, but more socially or culturally deregulated with, well socially deregulated which is cultural conservative and that small government oh, and you know I've already said this a billion billion times and freaking moderately well moderate to heavily uh progressive in a kind of statist way because of the energy concern. Which is basically putting your energy into low tech but high concept or actually high technology um, ideas. You know, the Venus Project, uh, some aspects of Ayn Rand, although she didn't realize it. You know, anything, any, any 1960s-ish forward thinking, but that's mostly the, uh, that's mostly the aspect of it. You know, the, the concept and the viewpoint, or the nuance. I would say the look, but obviously it could be any look. You know, and that, that's like, um, oh, I can't remember the name of it, but there's a few places in America that are like that now, that were set up in the past. Um, one was where they had that Time After Time video. I can't remember, Seaside, California, I think it was. It was meant to set up a balance of nature and people and design so it could have an energy efficient and um, society coefficient aspect to its civil structure. And I kind of believe in that. I mean, 
it's like, why do we build all these cities and stuff that are just net negative infrastructures that just don't do anything to anyone? Or anyone? They probably call it Hell's Kitchen in New York because it's a crap-ass design. You know, maybe if you build it, it'll come. This all the society things you want. But you build a shithole, and guess what? People act like they live in a shithole. A uh, surprise, you know? Ah, uh, you know, it's just, it's just, it's like that song, friggin' by Smothered Puppy, you know? Oh my god, it's just broke. You know, was, wait, was it Smothered Dreams? Broken Puppy? Broken Puppy? Smothered Dreams? I don't know. I can't ever get that separate. You know, it's just. Duh, it's broke. I don't want to know anymore. You know, I'm going to say this to Pukachu because I haven't read all his tweets and stuff, and it's like. Hey, I get you, man. I, I get the first wave thinking. But damn, it just goes so further down. You know, it's like, there's shit that's like... I don't even know why we're bothering with the second wave crap anymore. The second wave liberalism is just as bad. When you got black activists actually saying, Look, your white liberal shit, your white liberal racism is freaking, or your white liberal views are just as racist as anything else, then you should know you got a problem. Don't you? I mean, that's what I hate about not really being in the game. Because you got to have some real savvy to be in the game. People like Puka and the other major bloggers... They know all these concepts and words and history. You know, like all the references to the issues, you know, that might come up. Like, you know, just the names and, you know, references just boggle my mind because I've read them all. But I just haven't equated them yet to easy reference. I should just start studying this stuff. Ah, uh, it's just so daunting, to be honest. I mean, I just don't have that kind of articulation skills. I don't. <laughs> I guess that's what you need to be in the game, but wow, you know. Some of these people have college plus levels of, you know, skill sets, and I just... Uh? <laughs> uh? Like home improvement or something. You know, I want to build it better! Yes, oh, you know. How the hell did this idiot get, want to be in the technology? <laughs> anyway, yeah, I mean, you know, I mean, I like to know what people think about what I coined fourth wave politics. You know, I mean, sure, some people would say, well, it's bigoted and racist, it's homophobic and stuff, but. While it cuts away from, or takes away from second wave politics, and it 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 has some emphasis in third wave mixed politics, but it takes it on another slant, an opposite direction than that does. And I think it's everything I've been basically saying about um, social deregulation and how we can live in a techno-agrarian society. I really think you can replace um, a type of fiscal capital with social capital and not have it have the waste we have with the endless culture war. I think that's important to try to at least explore that even if we do lose some of our social liberties culturally or socially 
at least we'll be making tenfold ground from them in physical capital with economics turned into turned back into social capital and its application in our society with a reduction of poverty with cleaner grounds with better healthier lifestyle choices because of better food uh, cleaner soils environmental concerns you know lifestyle uh, living arrangement choices I mean that's got to count for something you know I mean conservation isn't always about not having a green grass or lawn and picking up the stuff on your nature hike it's got to be more like you have to have some privileges in there too but yet give back more and that's possible I think you know you build a better city you have a better aspect of the city in relation to the nature that surrounds it especially as suburbia and other sitting city environments start encroaching from wilderness areas more it can all be a little you know hive design that's an ultra complex for society and we can't all live as a frigging um, Borg type ant civilization because that's not natural to human beings you know I, I don't want to live like that in some kind of dome you know you'll never get it to work right it's just not indicative of human concepts and values of comfortable and natural living you need you need sky and earth you know it's part of what the problem with some of it is with our apartment living too you know it's just living in big castles I don't think anybody could be happy with that maybe some again I don't know anyway ah here's the better living and you know maybe the fourth way politics will have some solutions that can actually have something for conservatives and liberals to take away from if they don't find the other ways in the other camps well let me know what you think